Hi. Uh, so first of all, I didn't choose this title. It was given to me, and I'm kind of sad about that because <laughs> it sounds so businessy, and that's not what this is about. This is about people and working conditions. So first of all, I'm Kevin Agwatze. I'm the treasurer of Gameworks Night UK, the first union for video game developers in the United Kingdom. And like in my day job, I'm a gameplay programmer at, at night. I do Gameworks Night stuff. And like Gameworks Night UK, because sometimes there's confusion about this. The Gameworks Unite is kind of an international organization that is pro-union and wants to unite the games industry. But unions at the very best can be like on a nation state kind of country level. So in the UK, we partnered up with an existing union that is sort of radical, sort of leftist leaning to become a union in the UK. And then we kind of combined those two cool unions, cool movements into one. So when we talk about working conditions in the games industry, like especially not this year, but last year, it became a hot topic of discussion. And it was discussion about cultures, talking about culture of crunch, culture, culture of sexism. What's the discussion about law? Like companies literally paying people below the minimum wage. Companies literally, in Telltale's case, breaking federal war laws, which essentially means that they need to tell their employees 90 days before they fire them, and they didn't. They told them like four days before they fired them, okay, you have to be gone at the end of the week, which is definitely not legal, not even in the US. And this discussion really, really picked up in 2018 with the Foundation of Gamers United GDC. But it has been a long time coming. And it, it's pretty obvious if you look at what the labor conditions in the industry actually are. So that's what I'm going to do um, right now. I mean, obviously, it's like the big one, just crunch. And there are these two nice statistics from the Game Industry of this survey. The left one shows that the majority of people work more than 40 hours, which is already bad. But the right one clearly shows that 90% of all game developers feel like there's an expectation to work overtime from their companies. They feel that this is the, this is the culture bit of culture of crunch. Even if they don't necessarily work overtime, they still feel that expectation to do so. And of course, that overtime, probably not paid, like very probably. Then we're talking about, in general, salary, where even though most people kind of expect they're probably going to get more money year on year or it's going to stay roughly the same, they know that the games industry paid, pays relatively low wages. And they probably have less over time and higher pay in different industries. So looking at that, they definitely don't want to stay in their job a lot. Most people want to change jobs within the year probably to a different games company, but also a lot of people out of the industry. Like, there are only 9%, only 9% of the people want to stay in their job, like in general, most people want to leave. And that's not good, like why? And with people leaving, either the industry in general or the companies, you've got talent just constantly leaving the industry, you've got a sort of brain drain. And we got people being unhappy, needing to take their families with them to different countries even, not being able to settle down or accept a mortgage or build a house or just have a family in general. And it gets even worse, well, not even worse, but one of the worst aspects in my opinion is like gender pay gap. And then you have the worst offender, which is Rockstar. Rockstar pays female employees 64% less than their male ones. And when it comes to bonus pay, female employees get 84% less money. Just, just for comparison, the national average is 17% in the UK, which is already bad. Like, this is ridiculous. And then most companies in the UK are pretty bad when it comes to gender pay gap. And get Sumo, also like explicitly bad. And then only the big companies in the UK are required to publicize this information, but 
all of them are above average, except really enough EA, Microsoft, and Sony. In my opinion, probably because they have a lot of like publishing and office staff. Yeah, take a picture of that, it's bad. And then we go further. We already had the topic of gender pay gap. Let's take this one step further and let's talk about sexism and harassment, which of course there's a lot of, both in the games industry, as people who work there, as in the games you produce. And looking at the survey, which I'm, uh, this is important to know, this was a survey based on female employees, so all the people who participated were female employee, uh, game developers. Nearly three quarters of them said that they felt bullied or harassed at their workplace. Nearly 75%. Nearly a quarter felt they were harassed online, either as part of social media work or even in private. And nearly 20% felt they were harassed at conferences and events just like this. And then when asked whether or not they had brought that up with their employer, nearly 40% said no, they didn't they couldn't bring it up because they either felt it would hamper their further career or that the harasser was either the boss or a senior employer. So they get less pay, they're harassed, they probably want to switch jobs and they probably want to leave the industry. And that's how you lose like, good game developers that are creative and want to produce good games based on essentially bullshit. So, of course, this year, again and again, organization has been brought up as a solution for this, but like this movement towards unionization didn't come out of nowhere. If you look, and also, this is just a nice image I made once where it shows all the headlines GameWorks United received in the last, not even a year. And then, but since GDC last year, we've been covered over 200 times in relationship to Telltales, mess layouts in relationship to rock stars, 100 hour work weeks, we are not firing of a female and male employee for standing up against online harassment. Again and again and again and again and again last year. People brought up unionization in regards to the problems in the games industry. If you look at the IGDA survey from a decade ago, it was pretty split. I have people in favor of unionization, people against it, and people with no opinion. Just five years later, half a decade ago, a major shift. Two thirds of the people are now pro unionization, and only 14% are against it. And then, building on that, just two years ago, 82% said that they are in favor of a national union. When it comes to a company, it's a bit less. Only 66% of video game developers and of union at their own company. But in general, the support for unionization is massive. And it comes up a lot in the press, it comes up a lot of conferences. But when people see these problems, that have been going on for 20 years, 30 years, 50 years. Unionization is sort of the only option that is left to them because the employers are not gonna fix stuff, the press is gonna fix stuff, the players aren't gonna fix it. The only way to fix this industry is to do it ourselves and to stand up and help each other do just that. Any questions about that? Yes, I see a slightly raised hand. Yeah, um, so uh, this might sound like an anecdote, but uh, it will be followed by a question. Uh, recently, in regards to the articles um, about unionization, I had a conversation with my own workplace, and there seemed to be a very clear divide between uh, developers and people in art and design roles. It actually got even a little bit ugly on the company Slack. And have you actually done, um, or do you have any data regarding the support for you? I don't have data across disciplines. Now, of course, voice actors in the US 
are uh, in a majority unionized and a sec after. In general, that is the general voice actors union for both film and video games and TV. So they are already usually unionized. Um, when it comes to especially like programmers in places like Silicon Valley, that is, that is the most anti-union place you can be. Google, Facebook, and Twitter, they don't want their employees to be unionized. They like them to be contracted and get like a free drink every now and then and just shut the fuck up and work long. <laughs> As a better the company and just shower if you want to stay. So, like unionism, unionization has sort of different cultural histories. Unionization in the US is very different from unionization in Germany. It's very different from unionization in China. So I think that is the more deciding factor there than the discipline. Yeah, I don't have data for face this. Yeah? Well, I don't have a question, but I really want Myself, I'm not a developer or in how in IT involved. I'm an archaeologist focused on digital heritage, mm -hmm. and especially also in the academia of archaeology, uh, what you said about uh, harassment at conferences. So we got that also. But yeah. We're not trying to deal with it. But thanks. Yeah, and really enough, this sort of thing, well, it's half ignorance, it's half just not knowing of bosses and CEOs about the unionization movement. Like, one of the factors why we're probably going to succeed is that the CEO of Activision takes home his $15 million welcome bonus, goes to his nice villa, and doesn't think about the people who work under him. He doesn't think about that they are actively trying to improve the situation. Yes. Um, I think it was conducted by... Marie Le Blanc Flangyong as part, she's the head of Women in Games. Um, the next game it might just be it. might be the case. I genuinely don't know. But yeah, even if the numbers aren't as bad as this, they're still too bad. <laughs> 